Now what we want to do is talk about what is a radian. Radians are what you will use most in this course and in calculus because radians has more to do with the length of the arc instead of the degrees. Let's say I have something that looks like this and here's my circle, right? So here would be the degrees. Let's call this 30 degrees. A radian is the length of this arc. It actually tells me how big the arc is. And depending on, obviously, depending on the degrees, depends on how uh, long that arc is. So how do we define a radian? Well, here's one way we can define it, but let me see if this helps explain it better. It doesn't really matter what the radius of a circle is. Whatever the length here, this is the radius right here right, when I'm drawing it over in green. And if I took a string and I measured that distance, and then I took that same string and I wrapped it around until I ran out of string, I wrapped it around the outside of the circle, that would be one radian. Now, let's say I go to the next slide. This is the length of the radius. And we said one radian is maybe right there. Well, now I have two radians because I have gone twice as far. And then here's three radians. And when I get to the actual other side, it is pi. This three radian slide made it almost all the way to the other side of the circle, but it's a little short here because half of the circle is pi, not three. So now I know that the length of from here all the way to here, we call that pi, okay? And so if we call that pi and we know that pi is the same as 180 degrees because 180 degrees half of the circle. And I wanna know what's up here at the top well, half of 180 degrees, this is 90 degrees. And also it's the same as pi over two because it's half of pi. And I could do the same here. Let's say I have all my different points here. If this is 30 degrees, well, 30 degrees, 180 divided by 30 is six. So this is the same as pi over six. And then if I have 45 degrees, 45 degrees is 180 divided by 45 is four. So this gives me pi over four. And again, this top here is 60 degrees. Let me write it over here. So this is 30 degrees. This is 45 degrees. This is 60 degrees. 180 divided by 60 is three. So this is the same as pi over three. So now I've given you all the radians for the first quadrant. And that's really all I expect you to memorize. I expect you to know the points, those th few points in, the, in quadrant one and the values that go with them. So that's what I'm expecting for today. So again, here I have zero radians and we said that point is I'm going one in the X direction and zero in the Y direction. If this is pi over six, that's the same thing as 30 degrees. And the way I remember it is I can see that my X length, the length of my X axis is longer than the, than the Y value. So that means the larger number, which is the square root of three over two, is the X and the other is the Y. For pi over four, we said it was 45 degrees and the values are the same, square root of two over two comma square root of two over two. Pi over three, we said is 60 degrees and it's the same values because the triangles are the same except we switch the X and Y because now if you look here, 
we can see the x value is smaller. The length of the x part is smaller than the y. So all that happens is this changes to 1 half comma the square root of 3 over 2. And then again, up at the top, I have 90 degrees, and x is 0, and y is 1. So that's the quadrant I really expect everybody to know. OK? We're going to use what we call reference angles to figure out all the rest of the circle. So if you have like 1 half or 1 fourth, which one's bigger, which one's smaller? One half is bigger. One half is bigger than one fourth. If I have one fourth and one tenth, which one's bigger, one fourth or one tenth? One fourth. So notice that the bigger the denominator, the smaller the value, right? Yes. So <laughs> notice pi over six is a bigger denominator. Uh -huh. So it has to be the smaller angle, if that helps. Mm -hmm. No, that, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes, that makes sense? Yeah. OK. So yeah, so this, the bigger the denominator, the smaller the fraction. So like, and if we're always starting here at 0, I'm going a shorter amount of distance to get to this pi over 6 than I would to get to pi over 3. Mm -hmm. The way I remember it, because sometimes it is confusing because the numbers are the same. I mean, literally, we have points that are the square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, the square root of 2 over 2, comma, the square root of 2 over 2, and then 1 half, comma, the square root of 3 over 2. So most people have no problem with the middle one because the values are the same. Everyone kind of figures that out. But the two other ones, people have a problem like reversing them, right? Mm -hmm. So how I remember it, and I'll just say it again, is if you think about, I'm thinking about this pi over six, which now I know is the shorter angle on my circle, right? So this is the triangle that I'm talking about right now. Is it obvious to you that the length along the x-axis is longer than the length along the y-axis? Because of that, what we want to do is say, well, which one's bigger? One half or the square root of three over two? Well, since they both have a common denominator, all I really want to know, know is which one's bigger, one or the square root of three? I mean, one squared is one. So it has to be bigger than that. We know the square root of three is bigger, which means I know my x value has got to be bigger than my y value. If mm -hmm. I'm looking at my 30 degrees, right? So mm -hmm. here I can say, oh, I can see x is bigger. So that makes that the bigger number. And the y is the smaller number. That makes sense. Does that help? Yeah, that helps. OK, that's how I do it. I like literally picture, oh, it's the shorter angle. And so the X is bigger or it's the taller angle. So the Y is bigger. 